What a beautiful view and what beautiful oceans we have. Today's video is about TRO systems, total residual oxygen. No matter what brand of PWDS systems you have, Samsung or Techcross is what are the ones I have worked with. Both of them have had the same TRO measurement system. So let's see the basics of this TRO system, a few things what we miss out as engineers and what we miss out even as seniors that we don't train our juniors. So let's go through the TRO systems and the mistakes that we make and how the system functions. Let's do this correctly and that will save you a lot of time and this TRO system is about 95% of the errors that you get in ballast water treatment systems. Here we are at the ballast water treatment unit. This is the complete skid. The first thing what we're going to look at is the sampling pump for the TRO system number one. That's a pneumatic pump. And there's another one here, sampling pump number two for TRO system number two. Both of these are pneumatically air driven diaphragm type pumps. And as we climb onto the skid, these two big components that you see here, these are the ECUs, the electrochlorination unit. This is the system in use and you can see its indicator lights, the power white and the green LED indicates that these ECUs are presently in use. That is an automatic neutralizing unit, ANU, which contains a chemical called sodium thiosulfate mixed with water and that's used only for deballast operations. Over to the TRO sampling panel. These are the inlet valves, the inlet piping, the inlet tubing. That's the sampling port if you need to do a manual sample and test it using the handheld sampling testing unit. So now let's open the cabinet and see the two TRO measuring systems inside it. The one installed on the top is system number one and the one below is system number two. And as you see, number one is the system that is in use. These are the three solenoid valves at the bottom for each side of the ballast treatment unit and that will go to system two and this one to system one via the intake filter. This valve is a very important component of the system and must not be fully shut or fully opened. It has to be partially adjusted to keep the flow and keep the sampling pumps always running so that we get an actual representative sample after the ECU units and the TRO measured is the actual TRO what is in the system. So let's do a basic familiarization of this panel so we all know and we all aware of the individual components in this particular panel. That's the intake line after the filter. It goes to the flow regulator, then to the intake solenoid, and then to the system. Behind that glass, that's the drain solenoid, also called as the Perth solenoid, and that's the drain line. So that's the TRO optic sensor with its circuit board at the back. The black unit is your reagent pump. And these two plastic containers are filled with your reagents that you need to replace at regular intervals. And the other thing what you see on this kit is the power distribution equipment or the local panel, the local operating panel, that has this emergency control of the currents on the ECUs and this is the HMI PC, the Human Machinery Interface PC where you can control each and every operation just as you would do it in the CCR. Take a close look at this sketch of the TRO cabinet. Note that I have done just one TRO sensor in this one. There are two actually in every system. So let's go ahead and see the flow process. So as your sampling pump starts giving its pulsating discharges with the samples drawn after the ECU units, the sample gets into the TRO cabinet, into the intake filter, then the manual flow regulator and right up to the intake valve. And as you see, the sample doesn't yet flow into the TRO optic sensor. This is simply because the measuring process hasn't started yet. It's important to take note of this bypass valve that's there in the system. This is uh, partially open and it has to be such and do not adjust it because this will maintain a representative sample of your system. Even when the TRO cabinet is not measuring, the sample will continue to flow through this system. Thus, the representative sample will be very accurate and your TRO measurement will be accurate. And now as you see, the purge valve will just be open first along with the intake valve. So that will flush out the system and clear out any of the previous uh, water, previous remains in the system. Now once the cycle is complete, the purge valve will shut and seal your optics measurement sensor. Your intake valve will open up slowly with a pulsating note. And along with the intake sample, the TRO reagent pump will also give you one stroke drawing both the reagents into the sensor. And once the readings are obtained, the Perth solenoid will open again and drain out the fluid from the TRO optic sensor. And let's have a closer look at the actual sequence of the three components, the purge valve, the intake valve, and the reagent pump. And as you can see, the purge and intake valve initially open together. 
this will draw in a sequence of sample to just clean the sample. The purge valve will open up again and drain that particular sample. So that flushes the sensing uh, TRO optics. And now the intake valve will open up. As you can see, the intake valve has opened up now. And along with the intake valve, you will get one shot of the reagent pump. The LED lights give you that indicator you just seen. The reagent pump has pumped in one shot. And now you see the color change already taking place. Once the color change has taken place, the optic sensor will read this and it will give out a TRO reading that you can see up there. And once the system has already read the readings, it has given a stable output. And now the Perth solenoid will open up as you can see and drains out the liquid from the system. This completes the TRO sensing process and you can see a TRO that's displayed right there. So that was 7.23 ppm. The same readout will be visible at the front panel of this uh, CLX cabinet as well as on the HMIs locally and in the CCR. So here you can see 7.23 is the reading from T CLX number one. And once we head out to the local HMI panel, we can see the ECU one reading, the TRO reading 7.23. And let me give you a hack that will actually help you Analyze whether the TRO sensor is working well, that your reading is accurate or not. The lighter the color of the pink that you see, the lower the reading. So you see 0 0.2 is almost clear, it's barely pink. 1.3, the pink color will be slightly darker. As the reading goes higher, the reading keeps getting darker. I've taken a few shots for a few different readings to give you my theory, which is absolutely right. Darker the pink, higher your TRO readings. That's pretty much it for now. And remember, do not forget these kind of basic checks on your TRO systems. And as always, take care, bye-bye, and stay safe. Do like, do subscribe, and follow for more.